How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donnie here again. This time, taking a look at 21.5 stuff, detection of radioactivity. And our objectives are to explain the different ways in which radioactivity can be detected, as well as the uses for radio tracers. All right, so big question is, how can we detect radioactivity? How do we even know it's there? All right, so this is going to be a very basic uh, video, just kind of introducing some of it. There's like fantastic stories of how this was all discovered. Uh, I'm not going to go into great detail with that, uh, but I'll provide links to that information. Uh, first, how was it first discovered? Well, Henry Baccarel was studying uranium, and he noticed that it would fluoresce, and it can make things fluoresce, and the, he thought that maybe the sun is hitting the rock, and the rock's absorbing that energy, and then re-emitting it later. And that's what he was testing, till one day, uh, oh, well, how was he testing it? He was using photographic paper to detect the emission of uh, what he thought were x-rays from the rock. Uh, but on a cloudy day, you know, he had this sun and he was like, all right, cool, but it was a cloudy day, so there wasn't enough sunlight. And he thought he ruined his uh, experiment. You know, he had the rock sitting on top of the photographic paper, but it was cloudy out, so he was like, well, we're not going to get any uh, fluorescence. We're not going to get this uranium rock to emit any particles. But on a hunch, uh, he decided to develop the photographic film anyway, and he noticed that it was exposed. It had the image of the rock on it, even though there was no sunlight to give it energy and excite it in the first place. So the rock itself must be emitting particles on its own, not because of the sunlight, but from its, you know, its own whatever got going on with it. Uh, so radiation discovered. It was Marie Curie who coined the phrase radiation, uh, and they later figured out that it wasn't X-rays because the particles that were coming off were charged. All right, so what happens uh, is sometimes another way to detect it is that when you have radioactivity and you have radioactive particles being shot off, they can collide with other atoms, other nuclei, and cause them to ionize, which is helpful because if we have charges, then we can do stuff with those charges, like detect them with electrical currents. So this is how the Geiger counter works. So the Geiger counter basically works as such. It has a high voltage source, so it's got some power. It's got an amplifier and counter. And so from the high voltage source, we have two electrodes. We've got a positive electrode, and the outside of this tube is a negative electrode. So in this tube, we have a screen in the front, which is really thin. And it allows things to pass through it uh, into the tube, uh, which is important. And the rest of the tube is, you know, usually like metal and doesn't let stuff through. But in this window, if there's a radioactive uh, sample outside, it can emit radiation and it can pass through that window. So this is what happens. So first, the radiation enters that thin window and into the tube, right? So we have so a radioactive emission coming into the tube, which is filled with an inert gas like argon. Argon's a noble gas. It's not very reactive. It's not going to conduct electricity. So right now we have a broken circuit here. So it's not connecting. It's just broken um, until the radiation comes in to the tube. And then it causes the inert gas to ionize. It can kick off an electron or something. It causes, you know, uh, the argon gas to become ionized. And now that we have charged particles and we have these uh, electrodes that are charged, we'll get some migration of those charged particles. So the charged particles migrate towards the anode and towards the cathode. So you get the negative going towards the positive terminal and we get that positive argon moving towards the negative terminal. Now what just happened is a movement of charge and the movement of charge is an electrical current. So we just completed the circuit and we got uh, a charge. We were able to detect a current. So the current is detected by the amplifier and counter, and it's counted. So this can also be detected by a speaker, given a clicking sound. So that's why, in you know, if you know Geiger counters at all, first thing that comes to mind is probably hearing that click, 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 click from the radioactive sample. So you can hook it up to a speaker and make a sound that way. And then the counter will count it. So you can count how often you're getting uh, that radiation into the tube. All right, there's also these things called scintillation counters, which I think are pretty neat. So the big idea is that a scintillator has a phosphor or some other material that will emit light when radiation strikes it. So we have the same kind of idea. We got some, you know, atoms inside here. And then when radiation comes in, it'll hit 
uh, with those atoms, and those atoms will give off light, right? So that light is being emitted, which is pretty cool. So each time a piece of uh, radioactive uh, particle comes in, boom, causes light to be emitted. Now, when that light is emitted, the photons of that light strike a photocathode, which is right here. Uh, which is then going to emit an electron due to the photoelectric effect, which deserves its own video in its entirety. But basically, it's light hits a surface, and it causes an electron to be uh, shot out. So that's what's happening here. So light hits the photocathode, and it causes an electron to be shot out. Now, the photomultiplier tube is pretty much going to turn this one electron being emitted into a bunch of electrons, which can then be detected more easily at the end by the detector, right? So that's why we call it a multiplier tube. It's causing that signal to get multiplied. Um, again, I'm not gonna go into how it does that because that deserves its own video in and of itself. But that's the big idea, scintillation counters. The radioactivity causes light to be emitted and that light we can use to uh, make an electrical current that we can measure and count. All right, so the, yeah. So other clever applications, we can do things with these radioactive particles. Uh, we can use radio tracers, which is pretty much just using radioactive elements and atoms to trace how things are going on. So let's say we had this chemical reaction. We got photosynthesis. We got carbon dioxide and water giving us sugar and oxygen. Well, the question is, does the O2 come from the CO2? or from the H2O, because they both have CO2, or I'm sorry, they both have oxygen. Or, you know, is it a little bit of both? How do we even know? Well, here's a clever application. You can make water using oxygen 18. So we can make all these waters using oxygen 18 instead of 16. So oxygen 18 is radioactive. So now you can go, all right, well, where did this oxygen 18 end up? And you can detect its radioactivity. So you supply that water to the plant, you let the plant go through photosynthesis, and then you just then you just separate the O2 from the C6H12O6 from the glucose, and you see what's radioactive. And it turns out that um, it's the O2. The O2 is radioactive, so that tells us that the oxygen in O2 came from the water molecule, which is pretty cool. So you can do other things like that. Uh, you can do, there's stable isotope probing with carbon-13, where you can see where the carbon ends up in systems um but i gotta i gotta rant all right i have to rant and yes it has to do with dinosaurs uh so every time i hear this did you know that water we drink is the same water that was around during the dinosaurs it's all just a big cycle i always get a little bit irked and it's stupid but it's it irks me so let's think about this Yes, I understand the water cycle. It's, you know, starts in the oceans, evaporates, condenses into clouds, and comes down as rain. People drink it, and then they excrete it, and it gets cycled through, and it's all a big cycle. But is it really the same water molecules? Really? Is it? Because let's think about it. We got photosynthesis, which is using water, and it's breaking it apart, right? Where did the water go? Huh? Where did the water go? It's, it's not over here. It's not water anymore. It's part of the, the glucose, and it's, you know made into oxygen. It's no longer a water molecule. But then we get cellular respiration where we have, you know, that glucose and other oxygen molecules reacting to give us more CO2 and H2O, new H2O. So is it really the same H2O? If you rearrange the atoms, is it the same? In my opinion, it's not. It's not. So we're always breaking down water molecules and making new ones all the time. So is it really the same water as the dinosaurs? Uh, not all of it. Probably some of it is, but not all of it. Uh, yeah, you know, these the example of things that shouldn't bother me, but do. All right. Anyway, other applications. Uh, there's medical applications of these radio tracers. You can follow the path of elements in the body. A big one is uh, iodine at 131, and your thyroid. Your thyroid needs iodine 131 to work effect effectively. It needs that so it can make these thyroid hormones and the thyroid ho hormones control your metabolism in your body. If you don't have enough um, activity of your thyroid, you get hypothyroidism and your body kind of slows down. Uh, you have a loss of appetite, you put on weight and your body is pretty much just, you know, its metabolism is slowed down. Whereas if you have hyperthyroidism, you're like constantly hungry and you can't put on weight, you have weight loss and you're just always eating, um, cause your metabolism is too high. Uh, so yeah, I thought that 
was pretty neat, its applications. So to summarize, what can you say about the following? What can you say about how radioactivity can be detected? You know, photographic film, uh, Geiger counters, scintillation counters, what can you tell me about those? And what can you say about radio tracers? Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class and I'll put links to things in more detail if you're curious. Uh, you can check out those ones. Uh, bring questions. Goodbye. Okay,